I'm Carissa Vacker, and welcome back to Sleep Wave, the podcast where we let waves of relaxation wash over you through original sleep meditations and hypnosis created to help you fall asleep tonight. And don't worry if you don't hear the end of an episode. I encourage you to drift off whenever you're ready. Before we get started tonight, I'd like to say thank you so much for all the great ratings and reviews you guys have left us on Apple Podcasts and some of the other networks, too. This one goes out to Caitlin Arrow, who struggles with anxiety and insomnia, but finds with Sleep Wave that she goes right to sleep. We hope you'll love this episode, too, Caitlin. So if you find that sleep has come easier since listening to Sleep Wave, and you've not yet reached out to us, please feel free to let us know via the reviews on Apple Podcasts. We read them every day, and your ratings and reviews help us reach even more people who need a little help with their sleep right now. As many parents of young children and babies will tell you, you spend a lot of time soothing your kids back to sleep. I am lucky to have a great sleeper, but even still, there are a fair amount of nights when I am up soothing a crying baby back down to sleep. Sometimes I rock him. Sometimes I hold his hand while he's still in his crib. Others I quietly hum or sing a song or just rub his back to let him know I'm there if he wakes crying in the night. Participating in this simple ritual of parenthood often makes me think of all the other parents doing the same thing at this exact moment. It also makes me think of my parents doing it for me. As we become adults, of course, we have to do this for ourselves. Soothing ourselves becomes a skill we must develop. When I felt I was too old to go into my mom's room if I had a bad dream, but still young enough to live at home, I would often imagine my mom's hand running over my hair when I couldn't sleep. Now I will meditate or do a simple breathing technique or two to calm myself down enough to rest fully. But even with techniques to soothe oneself, sometimes it's just hard to do. Stress and anxiety often becomes a habitual response. For me, it usually starts first thing in the morning when I check my email. I get a little anxious about what the day may bring, what things I need to respond to, what fires I need to put out. So for the last week, I've been working on meditating for just a minute or two before I check my email for the first time in a day. Taking a moment to ground myself before I do something I have unconsciously trained myself to be anxious about helps disrupt that cycle. This small change in my day also helps me sleep better at night. When I lay in bed at night, the busy thoughts about what happened in the day or what still needs to happen tomorrow are a bit quieter. Building in a calming response before something I'm used to feeling stressed about helps me get a better perspective. I invite you to be an observer of yourself this week. Do you have a habitual stress response to something in your life? If so, try taking a small moment of quiet or a few deep breaths before you engage in that activity. Tonight, we're going to practice self-soothing before sleep so that you can consciously slow down your mind and relax your body. Honing this skill will help you sleep deeply and also bring more ease and peace to your days. This is Soothing Your Stress by Billy Gill. Stress is a normal response to the demands our bodies encounter on a daily basis. Our nervous system has a dedicated set of nerves that respond to the changes and challenges of life called the sympathetic nervous system. We are actually very well adapted to stress. It has, after all, been a part of life well before there were even humans. Even trees, which were in existence well over 360 million years before humans, have hormonal responses that help them adapt to the disturbances in their environment. 
If organisms couldn't handle a certain degree of stress, there is no way they could survive for long. However, even with our considerable adaptability and capacity for dealing with stress, chronic stress can overload our system and cause it to break down. We have the ability to make small adaptations to keep the body in balance in response to our environment. It's the well-known process of homeostasis. The way this process works can be compared to a thermostat. When the air temperature in a room rises or drops below a certain level, the thermostat senses those slight variations and tells the heater or air conditioner to keep the temperature within a certain range. In a similar way, through homeostasis, our bodies try to keep our system in a stable state with only the slightest necessary adjustments when some external or internal variation appears. We're a lot more nuanced than a thermostat, though. To be even more efficient, rather than simply responding in the moment to changes in our environment, our bodies can also make predictions about the likelihood of future stressors and how the body's resources should be distributed in anticipation of those stressors. This is known as allostasis, and it's the process by which organisms adapt to perceived or anticipated demands. Homeo means like or similar, so homeostasis means keeping things the same to maintain stability. Allo means other or different, so allostasis means maintaining stability through variation. Allostasis is part of homeostasis. It's the body's way of predicting how stressful some situation will be and therefore how much it should anticipate the demand for resources. If the body is already anticipating stress, it won't have to make such a large adjustment when it actually encounters it. Exercise is an example of how allostasis can have a beneficial effect. Since exercise is inherently stressful, the body's adaptation to that stress tends to make the muscles and cardiorespiratory system more efficient so that the next exercise session is a little less difficult. This is how allostasis actually assists homeostasis. However, when there's a chronic anticipation of stressors, it's possible to develop what's called a high allostatic load. At that point, many of the well-known health risks of stress, like hypertension and inflammation, begin to be more likely to appear. In tonight's sleep meditation, we take stock of our current allostatic load. That is to say, we check in to see how much we are anticipating future stress. Through meditation, we can decrease the allostatic load that our bodies carry, not only preventing the knee-jerk reactions to stressful situations, but over time, also preventing the negative health effects of a chronically high level of stress. Let your intention tonight be to practice conscious relaxation to gently soothe your nervous system to anticipate well-being. In this way, relaxation can also become a habit. You can train your physiology to have ready access to relaxation. The first step in training relaxation is finding a comfortable position with very little, if any, distraction. Once you have taken care to create the most comfortable position you can, the next step is to watch your breath. If you are able to gently favor your exhale, allowing it to last for a beat or two longer than your inhale, this will enhance your relaxation. Remember to notice the pause 
as your exhale becomes an inhale and then yield to the need for a new breath. It's important that you never force your breath too aggressively to do anything. Make gentle suggestions to your breath and gradually extend the exhale in a pleasant and comfortable way. Imagine the air that is flowing through your nostrils and throat and lungs as a subtle kind of vibration. Feel the vibration as you breathe in this way. Even though the air is only moving in your respiratory system, your whole body is affected by the breath. Muscles and body fluids move in concert with your breathing, and your nerves are soothed as you gradually smooth out the flow of breath. It's like water flowing through pipes or wind rustling through trees. Simply watch your belly as you breathe in and out. Breathe in and breathe out. In. As you grow more and more relaxed, your belly moves freely with the breath. The navel rises on the inhale and falls on the exhale. Inhale, navel rising. Exhale, navel falling. Silently, in your mind, repeat this to yourself as you follow the smooth flow of your breath. Inhale, navel rising. Exhale, navel falling. Inhale, navel rising. Navel falling. Inhale, navel rising. Exhale, navel falling. Continue watching the navel rise and fall with the rhythm of your own breath. Silently repeating in your mind, inhale, navel rising, exhale, navel falling.
connection. The more you practice, the easier it will become. So don't be discouraged if you encounter any obstacles to relaxation. Simply return to the rise and fall of the breath at the level of the navel. Many people think that relaxation should just happen naturally. And it actually does happen naturally. The main obstacle to relaxation, however, is that many of our natural rhythms have been disturbed by various unnatural lifestyle habits. It's as though we've trained ourselves to not relax. That is what training relaxation is really about. Undoing the ways we've gradually trained ourselves to keep relaxation at bay. By thinking of relaxation as a skill that takes practice, we allow ourselves space to go on the journey toward greater relaxation. If you think that relaxation should happen by itself and you notice that you have trouble relaxing, you will just experience more stress about not being able to relax. Give yourself the space to train relaxation and understand that if you practice, your ability to relax will certainly improve. Continue breathing at your own pace. Anticipating stress is itself a stressor. When you are going through a period where there are a lot of demands being placed on you, practice relaxation whenever you can and be as gentle with yourself as you are able to be. A period of time when you are already being challenged isn't the ideal time to place unnecessary demands on yourself. It's important to adapt to life as it ebbs and flows. There are times 
times of difficulty and adversity, and there are times when you have more support. These are known by the Taoists as times of fullness and emptiness. When your resources are low, it's not the ideal time to make great strides of progress. If you are injured or sick, you would be better served by focusing your mind on healing and resting. When you are feeling stronger, you will have more success in your efforts to grow. It's better to wait until a time of relative fullness to reach for some difficult achievement. This isn't laziness or weakness. This is understanding the cycles of nature and harmonizing your life with them. This is honoring the feedback that your body is giving you. The body is a loyal servant, and it will rise to meet the demands of life to the best of its ability. Over time, those demands accumulate, and the body needs nourishment to recover. Rather than anticipating stress, you will train the body to anticipate rest, relaxation, well-being, and ease. You will still have the ability to respond to life, but with a foundation of surrender and strength. As you watch the belly rise and fall at the level of the navel, silently say to yourself, I am training relaxation. Continue to breathe normally and to grow more and more relaxed with each breath. The pause at the bottom of your out-breath offers a moment of stillness. Do not strain in any way. Simply notice the pause and yield to the next in-breath as it gives itself to you. Imagine that the inside of your head is a room. The forehead is the front wall of the room. The back of your head is the back wall. Your temples are the sides. The top of your head is the ceiling. And your palate is the floor. Enter into this room and be seated in the center of the room. You have now entered into a kind of psychic space. 
It is your power of visualization that allows you to see in this space. In your mind's eye, visualize an inky black sky in this psychic space. Try not to analyze or intellectualize, as that will disturb your relaxation. Simply enter into this psychic space and visualize an inky black sky. black sky. Now see a single star. Inky black sky. One single star. One pointed awareness. Concentrate your mind on one single star. Concentration is one-pointed awareness. Meditation is no-pointed awareness. There is nothing that you are trying to make happen. The stillness of the mind that comes with concentration yields to deep inner silence. The single star is one single point. The inky black sky is the silence that gives rise to the single star. Now begin to count the breaths, beginning at 27, count down all the way to one in the following way, 27, navel rising, 27, navel falling. 26, navel rising, 26, navel falling, 25, 
navel rising. Twenty-five, navel falling. Twenty-four, navel rising. Twenty-four, navel falling. Continue counting the breaths in this way. Count all the way down to one. If you lose count, start over at 27 and continue counting all the way down to one. No mistakes. Go on, counting the breaths at the navel, all the way down to one. If you lose count, start over at 27. your relaxation gradually deepens, there is a virtuous cycle to this practice. You are training your body and mind to relax. And the next time you practice relaxation, you will come more easily and on and on. Sleep follows relaxation. The process is one of releasing and releasing and releasing. When you encounter 
some obstacle to relaxation. Notice it as a reminder to return to the breath. Your whole body is totally relaxed. From the top of your head to the tips of your toes. The whole body. The whole body. The whole body. Totally relaxed. Sleep. Sleep.